Have you ever heard the expression off on a tangent? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today is tangents and circles and lines and triangles within and approach angles and all that and how to do headlands. Again, I have no idea how the real world does headlands and how they do the calculations, but uh, it, it is complicated in terms of all the different ways and places that you can approach um, the, the boundary and how to turn and what where do you want to sense and where does the thing end and where does it begin and all that sort of thing. There's so many edge cases and as you try to fix one you create two more. But uh, we'll start in on how some of this works. All right, we'll get rid of all this. Okay, in our settings, of course, we can set the width of the thing. In this case, it's 12 meters wide. And of course, it could be any size. But then the turning radius, depending on what the turning radius is, if it's less than half of the total width, then you're going to make a turn, go with first straight line and make a turn again. If it's, say, this is 600, then it's going to just make an arc. If this is 1,000, then it's going to make that omega sign and that sort of thing. So you can see there's three kind of conditions when you approach a headland that are based on equipment width and what you want is your minimum turn radius or what you want your turn radius to be. So that really depends on the math in behind of how you calculate how far you are away from a headland and the direction that you're turning and the angle that you approach the headland. So there's a lot of different variables, but they all have to kind of work. And that's where it's taken me the last couple of months to just try to take a stab at figuring some of this stuff out. Um, I know we're talking to... Uh... So right now we have a, what, a 400 meter. So what we're gonna do is make a turn, follow the headland, turn around and come back again. So there's one type of headland like that. The other way, of course, is if this is a thousand, Now, that our turning radius is greater than our equipment width. So now we have to go out wider in order to make this minimum turn radius. And of course, the other way is half of it or thereabouts. I can't put 600 because it draws three circles. I have to figure that out yet. I have to put a bit of a, a fudgy factor in there. So now in this case, it should make the perfect U-shape or semicircle. So you have all these different types of turns. And of course, you can adjust the AB line. And now this tells you how far it is away from the turn. Oops. So then on a straight turn now, everything is the same. The, the lead in and the lead out, these distances are the same. So how do we go about calculating when to start the turn, when to stop the turn, how far away, Depending on the angle, are we turning left, are we turning right? All these sorts of things need to be calculated ahead of time. And that's the tricky part. And be able to stay half equipment width away so that thing doesn't touch. Now it still does in certain cases. It'll still hit the, hit the barrier or hit the boundary. But um, you can just set that distance to be farther away. It's not 100% working, but it works pretty darn good. Anyway, let's see how the math works. This part here is a straight on turn. So what you do is you drive up and you go around the circle and then you exit where you came from. So this is your boundary line. This distance here has to be one half the width of your implement because as, a, as the vehicle drives here, you want the implement to come close to the edge of the border. And this approach angle to the heading, now remember the boundary has a bunch of points and each point has a heading associated with it. So you have a heading and a point. So it's like a 
a three vector point and you know what you're heading towards the boundary is or your vehicle heading. So you subtract the two and then that gives you um, 90 degrees if you're coming straight on and you're 90 degrees perpendicular to the boundary. So then you subtract that and then of course that becomes a zero. So if you're coming straight on, then in terms of the easier math, by subtracting the 90, we know that we have zero offset off a of perpendicular, just to make things complicated, of course. Now, as you are, you know, not all fields are perfectly square and not all times you want to go perfectly straight. As you approach, you increase the angle off of perpendicular. So like this one is 30 degrees. Now you take the tangent of this of 30 degrees and depending on your direction, it's either up when you're making, when you're to the right, then that becomes a positive tangent. When you're coming this direction, then that's negative 30 degrees. So that's a negative tangent. That's how you determine, first of all, are you turning, or is the approach angle left or right? And then on top of that, now are you turning left or are you turning right? So you can either turn, of course, that way, or you can turn that way. The other thing is, as the as the circle size increases, then your offset away from the line also increases because the circle gets bigger and bigger, including the start and the stop. So that's two conditions, just either a straight turn or the omega turn. Now, if you're equipment or your turn radius is smaller than your half of your equipment width, then you get these even funkier turns where you have, you know, part of a circle come across following the headland and then part of a circle again to head the other way. So here you have a, here's your start point, pick red, here's your start point and here's your goal point. So you, what you need to do is figure out what these two points are. So in order to calculate the, the, this distance, how far the half equipment width, width is away, you take the cosine of the angle. Now cosine of zero is one. So then you take the equipment, half the equipment width, and then you divide that by the cosine of the angle. And of course, the higher the, the angle, the bigger this amount will be. Like you have to be farther farther and farther away, depending on that angle. So of course, if you're straight on, you know, like straight, like our last little drawing, then it's cosine of zero is one. So then your equipment width divided by one is your equipment width. Okay, so that gives you this angle, or sorry, this length. And this length then is twice of this, because this is a well, it's a two, two X, X parallelogram. So that part is easy. So now you have this point and you have this point, but how do you calculate these two points? And that was tricky. And that's what you, what's called using tangency. A tangent is you have a circle. Again, you have the expression off on a tangent. Well, a tangent is perpendicular to a point on the circle. So we use that and we use the right triangle method to determine what the length of this arc is. So to determine this angle, we take 90 minus this and then divide that by two because we're splitting the circle in half and that gives us this angle here. Uh, it just happens to work out because 30 and 60 is, is 90. Um, bit confusing numbers, but that's okay. So what we do is we take this distance now, we know this distance and we know this angle is 30. So to calculate that, we take this radius divided by the tangent of this angle. And then that gives us this point. That gives us this distance here. So it's what side opposite over adjacent. Calculate this, the approach angle, and like what is this distance? Same sort of thing. We split it, make a right triangle, and then we just use basic geometry 
and take our radius times this this time times the tan of 30 degrees to give us this distance. So I mean these circles can be of any size up until you hit one half the equipment width, and then we use like the other drawing for the oh, the, like, the omega sign for when the turn radius is greater than half the equipment width. So long story short, by using cosine, we can determine where to start. We can use the tangents and stuff and using tangency of a circle or a tangent of a line to a circle of an arc to determine our, our uh, end position and our start position. Now it gets a little more complicated again, because now there's also there's four, four different ways you can do this. You can either be coming straight on and then that just becomes where both of these are the same. And then of course you can make a left turn and you, you know, you can make a left turn. So that means the little ones first and then the big one second. You can also make a right turn or sorry, a left turn. And then of course you can be approaching it from the other angle. So then you have the opposite way again. So there's four kind of conditions that you can have on an approach when the uh, when the turn radius is less than half of the equipment width. Whew. So you can see that there's a lot of different possibilities and it all depends on what is your approach angle. This guy here, what is your approach angle to the boundary? Now, okay, here's a simple example. Well, nothing's ever simple. As we're approaching this headland, we determine our closest point in this bounding box is this point. And from that, we get an angle of the interpoint heading. And we also know our heading towards the thing. So we know we're making like a, toward, a slope towards the right. So we know we have a positive tangent. And we're going to turn which way? This way. So we're going to turn and we're going to make an arc like this. So our other point ends up over here. So again, using that math, we know that we're leaning to the right and we're turning to the left. So from all that information, and we know that we're exactly half of our equipment width, so it's just going to make a straight arc. And away it goes. And here it's counting down. It already has to calculate before you get there to turn. Now, problems and challenges. Okay, zoom in. You can see that we're taking this measurement here, but where we're turning, the angle keeps increasing. So which one do you choose? If you went from here to here and you use this angle to generate it, well, that may be another boundary. Or you choose this one. Or which one is the right angle to choose? Or do you take an average of all of them? And that's kind of been the challenges as you pick different spots. Of course, the resultant angle or the, the resultant turn can be many different directions. And especially if it if this boundary scooches up on a corner like this, well, then if you're measuring up here, then that's a completely different angle than what you're approaching. So that's still one of the challenges. It works 99.9% .9 of the time, but it's just those little little challenges like you can see over here if you're coming along zooming along and you're reading over here but the booms can actually hit here then you have to turn before that so you can't just scan the one area but again most of the time it works really well so that's some of the challenges with headland turnings and a bit of how it works and all the different uh, settings you can have and it's probably a confusing video but it's a glimpse into uh, the using tangents and tangent on a circle and using some geometry and how to calculate some of this stuff. Okay, thanks.